toothbrush. You never anticipated it. You, you, rose, you raised the price. What did you think was going to happen? Well, thank you, Chairman. Um, we raised the price over eight years, and we raised that price, and I think what is incorrectly assumed is that 608 is what Milan receives. We received $274 of that 608. So here's what I don't understand. Explain to me, when you buy the generic version, um, what, is, what is the generic, what's the difference in the generic version? In is our it just the name? It will be, we will, it will be the same product with epinephrine auto-injector on it. It will be the, the same product. So suddenly it's $608, if you, you, now you're going to have a generic of the generic, and that's going to be $300? Yes. And if they spend $300, I'm sorry, they get two? Yes. So your revenue is actually going to go up on the direct product because you say you only get $275, now you're going to get $300, correct? Well, I think the direct ship will be a very, we're trying to do that in case to catch everybody. We're hoping that at least So you're actually raising the price. You're actually raising the price. No, sir. Our net you're going to have more revenue. Our net sales will absolutely go down. Our net per pen will go down dramatically. How does your profit. net per pen go down when you're collecting, as you say, I don't know that I believe you, but $274, and under the direct program, you're going to collect $300. But from that, then you take the cost of goods out, which is $69. Which is the then, same on both. And then you take out the EpiPen related Wait a sec, Ms. Costs. Brush, come on, you're very bright here. If you're collecting $274 or $275 for two right now, and you're going to do the generic to save people money, you're going to charge $300, your revenue goes up. How does it go down? But that's not what we, we said that will be the wholesale acquisition cost is $300. we have cut the wholesale acquisition cost in half. From and the only thing you changed was well, the name. You, well, the only thing you changed the name. This is why we don't believe you, is that if the price goes from 608 to 300 your collection on that is actually higher, and you're telling me that your net profit is going to go down? Sir. Sir, I, what I'm saying is the wholesale acquisition cost, and I, I know I've provided this too if you want to put it up. The wholesale acquisition cost is what is going to 300. What we will actually receive, we're estimating at 200. We believe it'll be less than that, just as what we receive is the 270. You said you're going to sell it direct. We offer that as an option. There's still. How much does that cost to a consumer? $300 Sir, is what hope, you told us. We hope that everybody will get it through the channels of the, all of the programs. The patient reduces the cost for everybody across all the channels. Wait, wait. The patient reduces the cost. Explain that to me. By introducing a generic, which truly is unprecedented. I mean, we cut the price in half. So well, I know it's unprecedented to raise the price $500 or 500 percent. So you're raising it to lower it, but your net revenue goes up. How can you say that it goes down? What we receive is the 200, and we're estimating. You said that. you're selling it direct for 300. That we said that the wholesale acquisition price would be 300. Okay, you've got to help clarify for this this for us because this does not uh, make make sense. Um, and I don't know how you suddenly you offer that generic. Let, let me go to Dr. Throckmorton for a second. What is the current FDA backlog overall, not just for the epinephrine, overall, what is the current backlog on the drug approvals at the FDA? Currently, there are around 2,300 um, abbreviated new drug applications that we are reviewing. That is not backlog. The backlog I believe you are referring to would be the, the products that were in the the queue prior to 2012, prior to the passage of what, the- And what is that number? The, 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 the number of products that were in the queue in 2012 that remain unreviewed, less than 100. We have, we have reviewed well over 90 percent of those products and provided feedback to, to the sponsors. How many epinephrine-oriented products are in the pipeline right now? I can't answer that question, I'm afraid, Congressman. I can tell you that- No, 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 that, wait. Do you know that number? I do not know that number right now, sir. Why? We're having a hearing about this. Do you know that number? What I, what I can tell you is... No, no, here's the thing. They may tell you at the FDA, hey, we don't ever talk about this. I don't care. Okay? Congress doesn't care about that. I want to know how many epinephrine-oriented products are in the queue right now. 
I, I wish that I could, could answer that question. When can sir, you give me I, that answer? I, I can get back whatever information I can to you as quickly as I can. Are you going to get back the answer that I, the, to the question I asked? I'll be able to provide whatever information I can. Are you going to answer the question that I asked? Mr. Chairman? Yes. Mr. Lynch. Would the gentleman be, just a, on a parliamentary inquiry, would we, we've done this before with witnesses, we give them five minutes to go out in the hallway there and call the people at his office and get that answer for you. I think it's a pertinent question. You should have an answer. I yield back. How, how hard is it to get this answer? Who knows, who knows that answer? It, it's, it's, it's simply a legal answer. I'm, I'm not allowed simply to. simply a what? A legal answer. I'm, I'm not allowed to disclose commercial confidential information in this setting. And let, my understanding is Let me talk about it with staff here as this, as this hearing progresses. I don't want to slow it down for just that. But it is a question we want to understand the answer to. And I do think we, we should be able to get this. Last question, Ms. Ms. Bresch. Uh, this came up late in the process. Um, it was a surprise to us. But can you explain or clarify from your own vantage point the role that your, your mother played in this process? I mean, we're reading these articles that seem sensational. I don't know what's true, what's not true. I'm giving you an open-ended opportunity to express your version of what is going on there. It, I, and I greatly appreciate that. The article is completely inaccurate. Um, it, we, Mylan, when we acquired this product and realized the, un, the complete lack of awareness and access to the product and the fact that public places, let's take schools, that if a child at a school or on a playground were to go in and have a severe allergic reaction, go into anaphylaxis, and if that child didn't have a prescription in their name at that school, the school couldn't use it. So there were deaths in schools happening because there may have been EpiPens or other epinephrine auto injectors, but they weren't allowed to be used and children, uh, like I said, un tragically died. We saw this as unacceptable. So there had only been a handful of states that had started to recognize that epinephrine auto injectors could be in a public place in the school's name, not in the child's name. Therefore, the nurses and trained administrators could use it in the case of a tragic event. We then started helping, and I applaud the federal legislatures as well as state legislatures who quickly recognized um, these tragic events and that they could be largely preventable, and legislation began to get passed to allow schools to stock epinephrine. We then launched our EpiPen for Schools program, which, as I said, we've given 700,000 free pens to over 66,000 schools with no strings attached, and hope we could that one of the benefits of this would be that the other 65,000 schools will participate and receive free EpiPens. During this period of time, you know the burden on schools from a policy perspective, training perspective. So we gave amounts to various groups, whether it was the National School Board, National Education for Association, National School Nurses, that we could help in only helping to fund them, train personnel, and educate so that people could recognize an anaphylactic event and know how to use um, and know how to administer product. My mother has dedicated her life to education, has been a volunteer for years, and rotated one year into the president of the National School Board in 2012 um, and then rotated out. We have continued to work with these organizations to continue to help train and educate. So while um, people may want to criticize Mylan for giving free pens and having access in public places to EpiPens, I certainly th thought it was a very cheap shot to bring my mother into this. <laughs>